Package managers. What now? What next? All right, so what we did was we summarized what the IPFS package manager's special interest group has been doing so far this year. We went over our roadmap for next steps for the rest of the year. And then we ranked a whole bunch of critical pain points and potential benefits that we discovered in our last couple of months of research of IPFS-enabled package managers. That boiled down into six problems and 14 potential benefits. If you want to know what all 20 of those things are, because two minutes and flag and everything, there are posters in the back of the room that list those one by one by one by one. There's also a big pile of dots over on the table next to those posters. So if you want to add your own dots to see how frequently you experience those things, that would be amazing. But with the discussion and the dot voting that we did, we discovered these key takeaways. You want to take these? Oh, well, you wrote them. <laughs> All right. Connectivity, working offline, very important. Yeah, we, 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 we figured that. Replication of content, not quite as important to end users as we expected. New package management paradigms, new ways of using package managers, will enable new use cases. That's sort of meta, but pretty awesome. Reproducibility, way important. Decentralized publishing, great. Decentralized registry is not as important. Redownloading, terrible. Performance needs to be fast enough not regress, but not the critical issue in everybody's mind. However, showstoppers, uncommon, left pad, yeah, that messes everything up for everybody, not very often, but when it does, it's horrible. We want reproducible builds, and we want to dedupe package contents if we're developers, for package manager maintainers, less so. So if you want to weigh in on some of this stuff, on your way out, put some dots on the thing in the back. Anyone else want to say anything? No flag for you, sorry. Very cool, thank you.